Hi, everyone, and thank you for joining this Emperor's webinar today, where we are going to cover the critical rules for successful Active Directory backup. We are delighted to have our resident expert on the line, Guy Tavarovsky. Guy has nearly 20 years of experience in the identity and access management field. He is currently leading the technical solution strategy and engineering units at Semperis. Prior to Semperis, Guy was a senior premier field engineer at Microsoft, acting as a mentor for Active Directory and IAM solutions. Guy was recognized by Microsoft as Directory Services MVP for his expertise and contribution to the technical community. On the line, we also have Mickey Bresman. Mickey is the CEO and co-founder of Semperis. Mickey has nearly two decades of expertise in enterprise software, stretching back from his management roles in the Navy Computing Technical Unit to his days as a CTO of a Microsoft Gold Partner integration company. Just a little bit of housekeeping before we get started. This session is being recorded, so if you find that you want to review parts of it later or share any of it with your colleagues, we will be in touch in a few days with the presentation link. In addition, Guy will take questions from the audience at the end of this presentation. So if any questions come up during the presentation, please use the webinar question tool to post them. We will collect all of your questions and answer them at the end of this presentation. With that, I will transfer it to Mickey to the start of the presentation. Thank you, Meital. Hi, everyone, and thank you for joining. My name is Mickey, and I am the CEO of Semperis. Semperis is an enterprise identity protection suite that helps recover your enterprise from cyber breaches and identity system failures on premises and on cloud. Our technology provides a fully automated forest recovery solution simplifying the disaster recovery of your AD forest to three steps allowing you to meet organizational time objectives. And as for the day-to-day -day activities, Semperi State Manager performs continuous real-time tracking with granular search, compare and restore of objects and attributes. And with that, I'm going to transfer it to Guy. Thank you, Mickey. So, what makes AD so special when it comes to backup and recovery? Let's start with the obvious. The information stored in Active Directory does not always reside in a single place on the same domain controller. The most common examples for that are multiple domains in the forest, meaning that the domain controller from domain X does not have all the information about objects in domain Y, even if it is a global catalog. Another challenge are the application partitions with a custom replication scope. Only a subset of the main controllers, on, in that case, will host the, the application partition in question. Active Directory integrated applications hosted on the main controllers present additional challenge. Examples are enterprise certificate authorities and uh, DNS services combined with Active Directory integrated DNS zones. And in addition, some settings are local to the main controller. For example, non-AD integrated DNS forwarders or primary DNS zones, non-AD integrated again. Another point to be taken into consideration is the fact that domain controllers cannot be restored using snapshots and disk images. Doing so will result in USN rollback on Windows 2008 R2 and below domain controllers, and on Windows 2012, and higher non-virtualized domain controllers. Once USN rollback is detected, the domain controller will just refuse to replicate. Another challenge to take into account is the replication mechanism itself. Restoring the domain controller from backup, while there are other domain controllers available from the pre-restored domain or forest, and hosting the corrupt offending copy of the ID will result in a restored domain controller picking up the latest changes from the other domain controllers. Performing authoritative restore does not entirely solve that problem, as it will perform a merge of the restored data with the currently running state of the Active Directory. For example, if a user has been added to a group after a, the backup that was used to restore the group, the authoritative restore will not remove the user from the group. 
In addition, new attributes of objects that are specified on, in the authority of restore are preserved during the application. Another point, system state recovery is only supported on the same operating system instance. So even, even if you reinstall the operating system on the same hardware, restoring the system state backup is not supported. Same applies to a different hardware scenario. This makes restoring domain controllers from backup quite challenging. Now, let's look at some crucial guidelines for a successful Active Directory Forest Backup. So, let's start with the selection of domain controllers that you want to backup. The recommendation in Active Directory Backup and Recovery Step-by-Step -step Guide from Microsoft includes performing at least two trusted backups for each domain. In reality, the number and the selection of domain controllers you will want to backup is greatly influenced by your recovery plan and your SLAs. Well, there is the obvious one. If you want a domain controller available early during the forest recovery phase, you need to back it up because majority of line of business applications rely on Active Directory for authentication and authorization. The SLA of AD will be derived from the SLAs of those critical applications. In order to satisfy those SLAs of those critical applications, you need to be able to restore the functionality for those applications as soon as possible. Hence, the number and location, whether it's a data center or a network segment of the DCs you will back up, should be able to provide a different functionality both to those line of business applications and for the promotion of the rest of the domain controllers during the forest recovery phase. Remember those domain controls that are being re-promoted uh, as the last step of the forest recovery? So, they will be sourcing information from those restored domain controls, domain controls that have been restored from backups, and they should have enough power to deal with all those domain controllers that are currently being pre-promoted and there are, that are sourcing the information, replicating data from those domain controllers. So, you have decided what domain controls to take backup of. Next important point is deciding for how long to keep those backups. Storing the backups for Thompson lifetime period is fine. However, will your business be able to actually recover from the crisis, not the actual AD crisis, but the business side of the organization, if you roll the whole AD 180 days back in time? In some companies, going back more than four weeks means a bankruptcy. To others, going back a year is a valid option. So, how many times have you found yourself in a situation where you rebooted the main controller into directory services recovery mode, just to find out that the DSRM password is not what you are expecting it to be? Right. So, syncing the directory services recovery mode password from a D account using some scripting as a, a scheduled task is one of the options to solve that issue. Just make sure that the password of the account you are syncing from is documented and properly protected in an offline manner, something that will be available during the forest recovery phase, meaning that it does not rely on AD for its storage. These days, Active Directory has become one of the primary attack terror targets. On more than one occasion, hackers took over the Active Directory and held it as a hostage, demanding ransom. If you want to have a set of backups that cannot be tampered by hostile parties, encrypt your backups, make off-site copies, and make sure the encryption keys are backed up to an off-site location. Now, let's look at the selection of the main controllers for restore. The larger and more complicated the environment, the higher the chances that the backups of the domain controllers are not performed at the same time due to things like maintenance windows and time zones. This is important 
as during the recovery, we will be restoring the main controllers from different points in time. Now, the larger the delta between the earliest and the latest backup, the higher the chances that some of the restored domain controllers have changed their computer account passwords during that time window, situation that in some cases can result broken AD replication between the restored domain controllers. Ideally, you should try to not to exceed a delta of 12 to 24 hours between any two backups of the main controllers involved in the forest recovery. Otherwise, you might end up with the main controllers having different state of computer account passwords and having different view of configuration partition that contains information like Active Directory sites, subnets, domain controllers, site link configuration, and settings related to the replication of your AD forest. A word about physical versus virtual. Physical domain controllers obviously take longer to backup and restore. Well, the boot time is just longer. Usually, virtual domain controllers are easier to move, restore, scale, and are just faster to boot. But there is an important thing to remember here. If access and operation of your virtualization infrastructure relies on Active Directory, you might be in trouble if no backups of physical domain controllers are available. And another thing you need to ask yourself is, are those VMware ESX root passwords available? Are there virtualization and storage engineers there during the recovery and will they be able to assist if their involvement is required. Even if you are running AD integrated DNS and all your domain controllers are also DNS servers, not all of them are created equal. You do want to start with DNS servers that the line of business application servers are using for name resolution. And while on the topic of name resolution, some additional questions you should be asking yourself before restoring your Active Directory Forest. Are the selected domain controllers serving all the DNS zones required for the operation of the forest? Actually, are all DNS zones from the Active Directory Forest namespace included in those DNS servers that currently have been restored? Will the restore DNS servers be pointing to live and operational DNS servers for forwarding? Will the restore DNS servers be pointing to valid DNS servers for conditional forwarding? And what about zone delegations? Are they currently pointing to operational domain controllers that are running DNS services? And what about those stub zones that you have created for optimizing the name resolution? All those settings might need to be revisited and updated during the time of the actual recovery. And last but not less important, the actual DNS servers configured in the TCP IP settings of your domain controllers. So at what DNS servers are your restored domain controllers pointing to? A couple of words on the replication uh, topology. Some things that you want to remember about KCC. If you disable bridge or all side links, you will need to make sure that you have direct site links configured between the Active Directory sites involved in the recovery. If you don't have those and breach all site links is disabled, you will be having replication issues. Now, K KCC is smart. It can overcome presence of metadata of stale and non-present domain controllers. But it might take it some time. If you are restoring multiple domain controllers, make sure to perform metadata cleanup on all of the restored domain controllers. Do not rely on the replication to converge the metadata cleanup. Performing that metadata cleanup on all of the domain controllers that you are restoring from the backups.
Another important thing that you should be taking into consideration is the fact that manually configured preferred bridge heads will break automatic failover. If you have a specific domain controller configured as a preferred bridge head for Active Directory site and you currently have not restored that domain controller from backup, so currently is not available, that's that act, Active Directory site will be having trouble replicating with other Active Directory sites. Region, country, or data center firewalls allowing only a subset of domain controls to communicate should be taken into account too. If there is a need to restore Active Directory functionality to an isolated network segment, make sure that you have backups of all those domain controllers that are treated specially in firewalls, routers, etc. These morals are important to have, but can be easily replaced, seized, transferred. But make sure during this, the restore phase that your domain naming master is accessible from all domains in the forest and that those PDC emulators are accessible by all the writable domain controllers in the domain. Preferred bridge heads, manual connection objects, etc. could make backup and restore complicated. If you manually customized your system, always, always remember to account for it when backing up and planning for the actual restore. Here is something that, in my opinion, does not get enough attention. Phased, meaning one domain at a time or one location, country at a time for its recovery, is somewhat myth. I'm not saying that it cannot be done. What I'm saying here is that there are some factors that have to be considered and those factors might result in you deciding not to go with a phase restore approach. Now, if you restore one domain and delay restore of two other domains from your four, three domain forests, you actually cannot rebuild your global cattle by default. You can obviously change those defaults. You can force the global catalog to announce itself and to publish the main controller to publish itself as a global catalog. But you will end up with unreliable read-only partitions and actual global catalog will be inconsistent. And you will introduce some serious attack vectors. The ACLs on resources that are protected using universal groups for deny will fail and unauthorized users will be able to gain access to sensitive data. Resources using universal groups to grant access will not be available to. Now, if you try to roll out the restored forest gradually by propagating the restored domain controllers per network segment or per country or region, you are taking a risk of data leak between those broken and restored forests. Now, you could incidentally inject data from the broken forest into your actual restored forest, and you're also risking your environment by presenting a situation where users and applications attempting to use the incorrect forest or experiencing might experience inconsistencies during the switch over. The end result is a large volume of support calls and support staff trying to fight the side effects of phased forest recovery. Resources are allocated to investigating and troubleshooting something that is not supposed to work from the beginning, instead of investing in the full forest recovery all across the board. Now, let's recap what we discussed and go over the things you would really want to include in your force backups. Obviously, the backups of the main controllers themselves, system state backups or BMR backups. You would also want to document your force topology, sites, site links, replication-related customizations, FISMA roles, etc. Anything related to IP settings, disk layout, hardware specs of domain controllers should also be included in your backup plan. And DNS server configuration, actually anything related to the DNS name resolution 
should be also included in your backup plan. Obviously, those built-in administrator read 500 account passwords and DSRM passwords, you want them available during the recovery phase. And anything special, any customization of domain controller that might influence the recovery should also be documented and be part of your recovery plan. And now we will be taking questions from the audience. Okay, thank you so much, Guy, for this great presentation, and thank you uh, to everyone who submitted uh, amazing questions throughout the session. Uh, with that, I'm going to start asking Guy today's questions from the session. Uh, and the first question that came in during the presentation was, um, what are the backout options if a forest recovery goes bad? Now, that's an interesting question. So you need to plan for that uh, when you actually start your forest recovery. At that point, you would probably want to take at least one domain controller from each domain and isolate those domain controllers. You will need to turn in, them off either physically or just disconnect from the network on which you will be performing the actual forest recovery and you need to store them. Uh, if something goes wrong with your forest recovery, you will need to physically turn off, or if those are virtualized domain controllers, you will need to turn off the domain controllers that were participating in the forest recovery, and you will need to recreate this mini forest based on those domain controllers that you saved before you started the actual forest recovery process. It's actually very similar to performing a forest recovery with one exception that you, at that point, you should have a fully functioning mini forest. And all you need to do at that point is just re-promote more domain controllers based on that mini forest that, is, that you have brought back from, from the isolated network. Thank you. Uh, another question that came up is what are the ways to optimize or speed up the recovery time uh, once you have a disaster and you want to recover from a backup? Well, it, there are a lot of factors that, that can influence the, the speed of your recovery. I'll start with, with the obvious. Let, let's look at the size of your backups. The size of your backups matter because when you start your recovery, well, obviously, if you need to re restore more data, that matters. So at that point, you would want to review and revisit the contents of your syswall, for example. If there is a lot of stale data there, uh, reducing the size of syswall will reduce the size of your backups and obviously will improve the speed of your domain control rec recovery. Uh, the number of deleted objects and uh, Thompson lifetime period is also important in a large environment. If you have a lot of deleted objects, when you will be rebuilding global catalogs, and when in the case of multiple domains in the forest, when you're rebuilding global catalogs, uh, having a lot of deleted objects could uh, slow things down. Also, you would want to make sure that you have all those DNS server patches that address the excessive growth of your AD database because of multiplication of DNS tombstones. If you have a lot of them, again, that could slow things up. And if, you're, if you have customer attributes that contain large data sets or binary objects like pictures are a great example, either make sure that you have a certain control over those attributes that they don't exceed, for example, the certain size, or just think twice before deciding to replicate them to global catalog, because again, when you will be rebuilding your global catalogs in, during the forest recovery, that will, that will have impact on their time of 
global catalog recreation. What else can be done? Install from media could be used to streamline their promotion of your domain controllers or virtual domain controller cloning. VDC cloning is a great tool that can be used to, to simplify and streamline the redeployment of your domain controllers. And obviously, optimizing your replication topology would help with the time that it takes for the main controllers to, to reestablish replication and converge uh, after the forest recovery, during the forest recovery. <laughs> there are a lot of other factors, but that's something I could think of just now. Thanks, Guy. I'm sure a lot of the audience appreciates the answer, even though it's just the uh, few factors that came to the top of your head while we were talking. Um, actually, we might be able to uh, write a white paper about this and, and keep in touch with everyone, just let you know um, what you could do to speed up recovery process in case of Active Directory disaster. Um, and I think we have the last question that came in from the audience during this presentation. And the question is, um, what are the additional steps after Active Directory Forest Recovery to get things up and running in your organization? Well, man, that's, that's a tough one. There are the obvious answers. like. If you roll back your ID, oh, th there is a good chance that some of the domain joint computers and servers will lose secure channel with your ID. You will need to rejoin those computers to, to AD. Uh, there will be a, a volume of support calls with users, all those users that change their password during the time. So if you roll back your ID to 40 hours back, and you have users that have changed their password during those last 48 hours, basically you have rolled their accounts back to the state where they had their previous account set. So they will be calling the support, they will be calling the help desk and requesting a password resets. A, a lot of changes related to applications. So if you have applications that are ID aware or synchronizing with your forest, uh, you will need to revisit those application applications and maybe perform a full resynchronization. For example, if one thing that comes to my mind is AD sync. It, if you're using, if you're synchronizing your AD with Azure AD, if you roll back your forest, you perform a full forest recovery, you will need to re perform full synchronization of your AD to Azure AD. Uh, things like Exchange, SharePoint, all those AD where and applications that are tightly integrated with AD, you will need to revisit and actually include them in your disaster recovery plans and you will need to test the actual steps needed for those applications that rely on Active Directory. Thanks, Guy. And with that, since uh, no other questions came in from the audience today, if you do have any questions following this webinar, please feel free to shoot us an email and we will be happy to respond to your questions uh, individually offline. And I wanted to thank you, the audience, for joining us today and thank Guy for a great presentation and Mickey for joining us. Thank you so much and have a great rest of your day.